Dharamsala, seat of the government in exile of the 14th Dalai Lama in the Himalayan foothills of northern India. ไอ้ตัวกันจุดเต็มจุดเส้นเอ่อแท้ๆนะยาราวายเดี๋ยวเราต้องมาใช้ดิฉันเนี่ยราวายเสียดีเยอะไปนะจิ๋มมีสร้
conduct after your nomination as his rebirth. Utsa Gelta, one of the most learned monks of Tampje, was a nephew of my predecessor. When I met him at the monastery of Rongpu on the return trip from Lhasa, I am supposed to have thrown my arms around his neck. That's why they all believe that I was the true reincarnation of Gulu Rinpoche. After that, I had to pick out the objects I had used in my previous life from among similar ones. That's how I heard it, but when you were very little, you forget such things. How long did you study until you were nominated head of the monastery in 1956? Only after being recognized did I begin with my main course of studies. I went to Gyantse in Tibet to the monastery of Limpo because our religious tradition follows the Nyingmas. I asked the venerable Lhotsen Rinpoche, an extraordinary master, to be my teacher. That's how I began my principal studies. Little details like reading I had learned earlier. Everything else I learned later in Tibet. Like the legendary Castle of the Holy Grail, the monastery of Tami nestles against the steep mountainside high above the Bote Kozi, the Tibetan River. <laughs> Davang Sadup Tenbi Gyaltsen, the head lama of Tami. As early as 1958, he was recognized as the reincarnation of his predecessor, Lama Tundu. <laughs> Every year since 1940, Mani Rimdu, a ritual dance drama, is presented here. Its performance attracts men and women from all the villages of Kumbu. Known as Kham Dance, this monastic feast has its origin in the Tibetan province of Kham. The open square in front of the Gompa, the central building, has been swept clean. Prayer flags and tankas, colorful silk tapestries, decorate the scene. Symbolizing the victory of Buddhist saints and divinities over the forces of evil, Mani Rimdu lasts four days at the time of the full moon. Natives and tourists are gathered in the monastery courtyard to attend the Chewang rites of life consecration, intended to bestow the blessing of long life on the recipients.
katas, white friendship scarves, are presented to the Rinpoche, the abbot of Tami. Offerings of grain and cash contribute to the support of the monastery. Omani Padme Hum. The jewel in the lotus is carved in stone a thousandfold. Pema Gyalpo is on his way to the Tami Gompa, where he hopes to learn more about the death and rebirth of Lama Tundu. Has Lama Tundu, like so many other Lamas, left any piece of writing about his rebirth, when and where it will take place? It's not known that he left any letter. But my father had a close student-to-master relationship to Lama Tundu, studied with him, and was ordained by him. It is the year 1958. Lama Navang Tundu, the old head Lama of Tami, celebrates Manirindu. It is late in May, at the time of the full moon. After reciting the mantras, the monks accompanied Lama Tundo with sacred music to his room, and there he died without ever having been ill. So suddenly, was he alone? One monk was with him. Only one? Was that in 1957 or 58? It must have been in 1958. After the death of Lama Tundu, the precise time and place of his cremation were determined by the Tsipa, the astrologer Lama. The dead man was bound in a sitting position, wrapped in white sheets, and placed on a funeral pyre. The sun ignites the sacred fire. Oils and spices, sandalwood and incense sticks are cast into the flames. 
The spirit of the departed has been purged of all karmic obscurations by the fire that is Amitabha, the boundless light. You were born in Beding, Rinpoche. When was that? It was the day of the celebration of Buddha's return from Kushita, the realm of the gods, during the ninth Tibetan month. We learned that your mother is still alive. How old is she now? She is 60. Your mother is said to have had a dream at that time about your reincarnation, in which your predecessor, Lama Tundu, appeared to her. Can you tell us more about this dream? The day Lama Tundu passed into the other domain, she dreamt that he came to her with a wooden pack frame on his back. The Lama came with a carrying frame on his back and held a golden Vajra in his hand. We heard that an oracle is said to have prophesied in which country and place the Venerable One would be reborn. Is this true? There has never been any such prophecy. But when I was three years old, as I am told, I spoke of my home country and the place of my birth. Such things, I'm told, I said again and again. Thereupon, the most important companion of the late Lama went to Choche Rinpoche, then the most eminent Lama of the monastery, and told him about me. That's how I was discovered. There are rumors that a young Tulku reincarnation of an eminent lama lives at the base of a holy mountain. Monks and lamas set out in small groups to follow up all clues. The nunnery of Devuchi, a few miles south of Mount Everest, is situated at the foot of Amadablam, a peak venerated as a holy mountain. All questions lead nowhere. The venerable nuns invite them to a common prayer. Thank you. 
A delegation sets out on the arduous trek across Tesi Lapsha, a 19,000-foot pass which leads toward the Rolvaling Valley. There is every indication that the reincarnation may be found in Bedding, a Sherpa village near the base of Yomo Tseringma. In the west, this sacred peak is known as Gauri Sankar. After days of hardship and unsheltered bivouac sites in freezing temperatures, the men reach the hamlet of Bedding. Word has gotten around that a young Tulku, a reincarnate Lama, has been living in their midst. It is often assumed that any rebirth must take place at the moment of death. 
that's not so. Years may pass until a suitable body can be found. Kuroche Rinpoche declared me to be a possible reincarnation of Lama Tundu, and I had to pass some very severe tests. Important religious cult objects used by my predecessor, like his hand drum, his bell, and other things, were mixed with similar things and laid before me. If he recognizes all his possessions, they said, then he must be the true reincarnation. If not, we can't acknowledge him. I passed the test. After further examinations, the delegation has reached a final decision. Soon they start out on the return journey with the young Tulku and his parents.
Tulce Rinpoche gave the young Lama the name Navang Sadu Tembi Gelsen. Among all the other boys, he stood out through his extraordinary behavior and intelligence. He is the true reincarnation of Lama Tundu.
Do you know whether this is your last incarnation or whether you will be reborn again as a lama? The number of my rebirths is infinite. They were recognized for the past seven generations. We all have innumerable reincarnations behind us. I shall return whenever it is necessary for religious or cultural reasons, and whenever I am needed here in faithful performance of my duties. This is the third day of Mani Rindu, the dance of the black hat magicians. barley beer of the Sherpas is flowing freely. are popular gestures. They symbolize the four directions. White stands for the east, green for the south, red for the west, and yellow for the north. Raja Dorje Tolo, one of the eight wrathful manifestations of the great sage Padmasambhava. In the 8th century of our calendar, he was invited by King Tisan Detson to introduce Buddhism to Tibet. In Mahayana Buddhism, all divine beings are endowed with peaceful as well as wrathful aspects. Mercy and compassion bring happiness. The angry appearances serve as a warning to the enemies, telling them that the deity can also destroy those who oppose Buddhism. Sering, who represents old age, entertains the audience with a humorous interlude. As a caricature of a very ancient man, he is entitled to make fun of everything considered sacred.
The next dance presents one of the inhuman aspects of the Buddhist pantheon in Kumbu. Although Rurang, the dance of the skeletons, is supposed to make a terrifying impression, the crowd considers it more with amusement than with awe. representing a naked human body is beaten and tortured. This symbolizes the torments which people may suffer at the hands of evil spirits, unless they are aided by the powers of Buddhist saints and divinities. The Dance of the Skeletons is a graphic representation of certain functions of Yama, the Lord of the Dead. Dharmapala, dance of the eight terrible ones. They are by no means evil, but present themselves in partly horrifying shapes in order to challenge dangerous spirits. Mani Rimdu lasts four days. These mystery plays are more than theatrical spectacles for an entertainment-hungry crowd. They are presentations of a supernatural transcendental world mirrored in the human soul. Spectators and performers become part of a common experience which removes all borders between the profane and the sacred. The battle between the forces of light and darkness, between the divine and the demonic, is shown on a historic plane as well as in the timeless realm of the human soul. They all blend into one unit, participants in a ritual, an initiation into one of the oldest mysteries where all religious life originates and where the awakening of mankind has its beginning. aiming you see, to improve the hum human being or to try to try to have the human being with this human quality so therefore you see, the different religions they in spite differences in philosophy or tradition and in some cases fundamental differences but all is carrying the same message but all are you see aiming to the same goal so on that level all religion can sit together can work together for benefit for humanity. Sometimes the people who are very much interested about the material development, they sometimes neglect about the inner value. At the same time, some people, in I think mainly in the ancient time, see too much involved about spiritual value, spiritual development, but neglect about the external develop, material development. Now I think, you see, now they are our future I feel is based on combination this material development and spiritual development so that I think our future will be more happier and more I say I think more balanced way. So if we is neglect about in, internal value and simply become sort of almost like it's a slave of money or slave of matters or the slave of technology, then I think then our future will be a disaster. So the human value must keep on the, on the top. So the more balanced way, the internal development and the external development, these two things should go to, together. So we, we must realize you see, that our responsibility, our duty is to take care about our environment, our own planet. Since this planet is our only home, so we have no other alternative. You see, 
in spite of some problems in this planet, but this is our only home. We must take care about this, this planet. I think we are at the time of a new age of entire human history. Now, I think this moment we must develop the sense of universal responsibility and the, the I think, the sort of the wisdom, the combination, material development and the spiritual development so that our future will be happier, more harmonious, it's more peaceful. And another thing, it is very, very essential is to keep optimistic attitude. Optimism is very, very essential. Whether we achieve or not, you see, with that kind of motivation, is make attempt. That is very essential. If right from the beginning, if we remain with pessimistic attitude, as you say, oh, we don't, we, we can't do, is this kind of see, attitude, this I consider the real the seed of failure. So it is, it is far better you see, to have the self-confidence. With that, the firm is a determination, you see, to make better world, happier world.